Hello and welcome back to the Algotistical Podcast, episode 53. I do wish everybody a happy and healthy start to the day. It's the 13th of November, approximately 9am in the UK. What we're going to do here today is simply discuss the Libra scale of importance, meaning the pros, the cons for buying or selling Bitcoin. To do that, we're going to be using our trend volume metrics. As always, these help us navigate the four postulates of trend, volume, momentum, and volatility. We'll be doing the same analysis on four quadrants of the market, meaning the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and last but not least, the intraday, meaning the four hourly. So what this does is it gives us a kaleidoscope on price action delivery so we can identify similarities or disparities and that helps us draw the thesis um, a little bit more clearer. So let's jump into that. Today I'm going to start off with the adolescent time fractal meaning the four hour and then we're going to massage it upwards. Typically we'd start off with the monthly and do a top down analysis but I just want to shake it up a little bit today you know. So let's look at the four hour. So looking at the four hour, we can see there's 82% buy pressure with 17% sell pressure with two hours and 56 minutes until this four hour candlestick expires. And then we'll see a new four hour candlestick print in the next two hours, 56 minutes. So again, volume constructive trend, also very constructive. Um, notably, we have been going up for a very long time. We are above all major moving averages, okay? So this one here underneath our feet would be the 21 day EMA. This one here is the 55 day EMA. And the bottom one right under here is the 200 day simple moving average. Now, a lot of you will be wondering, what's the red one, okay? The red one is the historical norm that's baked into the trend volume pro version three. It's not necessarily a set look back period like the 21, 55 or 200. It's just a historical average norm type of thing. It's like a mean line. Think of it like a mean line, okay? Or an average line, but not really like a EMA or an SMA. Don't want to confuse you. Um, similar, but different, right? Looks the same, but it's different. Um, you will find that this one hugs price action a little bit more tighter than the exponential moving averages and the simple moving averages. So where this differs is it's more on the money. You know, it's more adaptable to the ebbs and flows of the market. So I tend to have all of these on at the same time, it helps me draw my thesis. So looking at this, it would tell me to read between the lines, even though we're above the 21, the 55 and the 200, we are underneath the historical norm, which is a recipe for what's to come, right? It's a signal, it's a signature. And that's to say, as long as we're underneath $37,200 on a four hour time fractal, I think we have a hard time going back up, okay? Um, now, if we do get a four hour candlestick above this red line, it will then turn green. Automatically, it will turn green. So it's not like, oh, I think this, or I feel that. No, it will change color when it's time to change color, <laughs> you know, and we posture on that change of color. So again, that's what it is. Now, another thing I want to mention on the four hour is that Bitcoin did hit an all time high last week for this year. So it hit a new yearly high on Thursday. Since Thursday, we have kind of been falling, not gonna lie, not gonna fluff it up, not gonna blow smoke up your ass through the speaker or through your headphones. I'm gonna tell you the truth, you know, the best way I can see it and deem it. And at the end of the day, we did tag just underneath $38,000, okay, just underneath 38, where we saw a rejection around this white horizontal, which is my proprietary algorithm that I've coded. And it tells me that, you know, we should be looking for short positions there. We should be looking to sell the market there. We should be looking to take profits there. Um, and that's exactly what happened on Thursday. So yeah, you know, very textbook thus far. Of course, it's um, grinded back up a little bit of consolidation. But I do think the next distribution will be towards the downside contingent on remaining below 38 G's. So you see, if we go above this white line here, which is 38 G's, I do believe we can then gun towards 40,000, right? So ultimately, as long as we're under 38, risk to the downside. However, if we go above this white line here, which is 38, we can derive targets back up to there, which is about 40 G's, 40 G's per Bitcoin. Um, but again, do I think it's likely? Not at all. Do I think it's a probability? Of course, anything can happen in the Ruliad. Okay, this is not a dead cert. Um, anyone that wants to get rich quick gets typically wrecked quick. 
So again, just be cognizant of these things. Rome was not built in a day. And um, certainly speaking, the markets do not go up linear or down linear. It bobs and weaves, ebbs and flows. And that's the efficient market hypothesis. No matter how much we wish it to be the up or wish it to be down, it is what it is until it is what it is not. So that's what I'm looking at there. Cool, leave it there. So let's just say we wanted to go to the downside, right? So I would be looking at this as a likely situation. So as long as we're underneath this red line here, right? I do suspect we'll be gunning towards this white horizontal here, which is about 35 Gs, which does represent a about a $2,000 deduction per Bitcoin. Okay, that takes us down to this white line here. And then if that fails to hold us as support, I do drive targets much, much lower, which is around this region here. And as you can see, there's multiple confluence lining up with that region here. We've got the 200 curling up into this region, and we've also got this white horizontal that's tattooed on the chart via the Trend Volume Pro version three. So there's a lot of synergy around that region, which is for all intended purposes around $32,000 per BTC so it doesn't you know it implies we can drop worst case here about five thousand dollars until we see a meaningful bounce okay um, not to say we have to get a bounce there but I do think you know the air probability does heighten that we do get a bounce or a nice little bid off this region if I'm wrong again we'll shatter that and go to the next area of support which is about 30 sorry about 30,000 actually yeah 30,000 um, approximately $29,945 if you really want to be cute with it. Um, so whiskers shy of 30 Gs. So that's what I'm thinking around that region and then we'll see how it wants to fare, okay? See how it wants to fare. As you see, going back into history, this line did get a lot of um, interplay. So you can see here, we had this debacle in August and then subsequently fell through to the downside. So just going through some of these past iterations so you can actually see the efficacy of this um, white line, okay? Because it's held us as resistance throughout history. And um, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes, okay? There's a lot of interplay on these white lines. Just think of them like um, ping pong, okay? The price action is the ball and these white lines are effectively the bats within ping pong, okay? And you'd expect price action to ping pong between these white lines. Um, and that's how the algorithms make money, you know, that's how the bots and institutions and, uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. But that's how the big boys do it, right? Algorithmic. Cool. Um, I think we'll leave it there then. That's the four hour kind of fleshed out. Um, Momentum wise, let's quickly look at momentum really quickly. So momentum, we can see stochastics nose diving here. This is the red line you see here. We can see the RSI has been kicked out of the critical zone, something we have been watching methodically for about a week or so now, you know. We got into the critical zone on the 9th of November. We then got booted out of the critical zone yesterday between eight o'clock and 12 o'clock midnight. And subsequently, I don't think we go back into the critical zone anytime soon. Now, as long as we're kicked out, which we are, I do suspect what's in motion stays in motion and we continue to fall. Um, that's in tandem with the moving average convergence divergence, better known as MACD, and that continues falling underneath $37,259. Respectfully, right now we're clinching onto 37 flat, so that does mean we are approximately $259 underneath the moving average convergence inflection. So in layman's terms, we're falling as long as we're $259 under, which we are. So cool. Um, and the stochastic momentum also strengthens the thesis in saying that as long as we're underneath $37,179, the stochastic reflexivity will be picking up velocity to the downside. Um, and also what we can see here is this white line, which represents historical volatility. And we can see that hit a zero percentile yesterday when we got kicked out of the critical territory. So where we see these red dots turn to yellow, that denotes getting kicked out of the critical zone, which is above an 80 read. And we can see here, volatility was underneath a 20 read, which is also the critical zone, but the critical low zone, remember this is measured out of 100, right? So the critical low zone would be sub 20 and the critical high zone would be above 80. So re respectfully, RSI got booted out of the 80 critical zone and volatility is literally at the bottom of the critical zone, all right? Makes sense, hope it kind of does. So again, what we'd expect here is an expansion of volatility from the zero percentile. Um, and yeah, you know, we'd expect the, the contraction on momentum to continue to occur. 
from the upper echelons. You know, we got booted out of the 80 reads. Now we're bubbling around 77. We are seeing volatility creep up still underneath a one percentile. So it's got, you know, enormous amounts to go and expand, basically. And we do see momentum literally buckling heavily. Um, and it will remain that way as long as we're underneath 37.2. So cool, leave it there. I think that's kind of the gist of that. Um, let's pull up a daily. How are we doing for time? 10 minutes. Okay, let's try and speed up now. So looking at the daily, what do we see really quickly? We've got 67% sell pressure. We've got confluence across all momentum oscillators, meaning RSI, MACD, and stochastics are falling. Um, stochastics, notably, have been kicked out of the critical territory. Um, that was on Friday. You know, Friday, that got happened. That got happened. That did happen, Jesus Christ. Let's sip some coffee on that note. Mm. And yeah, that's about it, man. We can see what we see here, right? Um, now let's take the numerator and the denominator, meaning largest number and smallest number. So we can say to ourselves, boom, we've got 37 flat, which is the RSI inflection, and we've got the MACD inflection at 37.4. That's to say this, as long as we're underneath 37.4, there is no chance of the daily momentum going back up Okay, that's just simple. I'm not going to spend too long on that. Um, right now we're 37 flat, so we're underneath that inflection by $478, and that's ironclad until it is what it is not. So cool, leave it there. Um, okay, I think I'll just leave it there for that one. Let's pull up the weekly. Actually, you know, for the daily, I want to mention one more thing, guys and dolls. So if we look at these candles, right, in the next 14 days, sorry, 14 hours, beg your pardon, in the next 14 hours and 45 minutes, we will close today, if we close anywhere around here, red, okay? So that means the last time we saw three red candles in a row was literally October the 8th. Um, actually, no, you could have said this actually, October the 12th to October the 10th, around that region. This clusterfuck here anyway, right? And if you're looking at the screen, I'd hardly urge you to pay attention to this. This is the clusterfuck we're talking about right here. So this is the last time we had three consecutive red days in a row on a daily time fractal. So in layman's terms, about five weeks ago, you know, about five weeks ago, we had exactly the same signature. Five, about five, four weeks ago, however you want to dub it, right? The point being, we have not seen this long of a downward correction since about a month, okay? So again, does this move have legs back to the downside? It's possible now, right? The last four weeks have been extra exuberant to the upside. We've created a myriad of, you know, sorry, we've created a myriad of fair value gaps, meaning buy side imbalances, sell side inefficiencies, posh language for outsized candles to the upside. And I would expect an imbalance to be um, respected. So what I mean by that is if we've got a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, we'd expect the sell side inefficiency to be delivered and that's yet to be delivered. So remember, the market is a weighing machine. If it outbalances itself to the upside, bots and institutions will balance it. This is the way it's designed, right? This is why we identify internal liquidity and external liquidity and simply play the gyrations in the middle. Very important. So just to perform the thesis really quickly, I'm gonna quickly mute this indicator and I'm just gonna draw a fair value gap on the chart so you can sort of synthesize what I'm alluding to because I'm a visual learner myself, so it's very good for me to um, contextualize this in visual format. So realistically, we're looking at this. So this is the big, big buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. And for the sell side inefficiency, we'd expect targets to back down to this sort of area here, which is the green horizontal. Okay, so let's just find our tool quickly and we will illustrate that. So if we get a little arrow here, we're looking at targets towards here, guys and dolls, right? So about here. So if that's 31,000, right now we're teetering just underneath 37. So yeah, I expect a correction around here. That'd be perfectly natural. Um, another thing I wanna show you guys quickly is if you've got a BDI, you can see there's another sell side, sorry, buy side. <laughs> buy side, sell side, what side, baby, what side? My side. Um, but no, we can see another buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency as well, predicate much closer to current price action delivery. So specifically this cluster right here at this upper echelon. So what we're doing is here is highlighting this. Let's just zoom in on that so you can see. 
Okay, so it's this bad boy here, right? So this candle that led us to the all-time high ever this year, right? So the candle that was responsible for the all-time ever this year was on Thursday. Now, we call that a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency because the, the top side wick of Wednesday did not converge with the downside wick of Friday. So subsequently, there was an imbalance on Thursday right now the idea is this as long as we're above the middle line constructive that's good right i expect continuation to the upside however however watch this guys and dolls if we close below this flat green line which is also called the 50 percent line of the rectangle or the middle of the fair value gap or some people they call it consequent encouragement so if we're above consequent encouragement meaning if we're above thirty-six thousand, good for us However, if we do go below $36,000, meaning underneath this middle line, then it would be very much, you know, odds to the downside, statistics to the downside, probabilities, you know, the probabilistic nature enhances drastically. Um, and that's no hyperbole, right? As long as we're above this green box, good. However, if not, becomes very bad. And that's as simple as that, hand over fist, clear observation. Um, so again, let's quickly get a little arrow so you guys can visualize this. It's very good to get visualizations, right? In between the jargon and the hype rah rah la la talk. Um, because it's very important that you understand this. So look, price action's here right now. I'd expect it to go here and bounce preliminary. If it bounces, good. If not, it will shit the bed. Okay, now the question becomes where will it stop shit in the bed? And again, we've got a myriad of buy side imbalances to fulfill the consequent encouragement on so let's just draw the next major one so you guys can kind of see how i do it um so let's get our geomic geomic geometric there you go geometric shapes baby um so let's copy this there and get that into there you can see this is the next major one so we'd be gunning towards this consequent encouragement here so if we go below sort of, let's say 36, we'd be gunning towards 31. Massive move, right? Massive move. So you can see the floodgates open up. If we buckle out 36, we go straight to 31. That's a 5K deduction per BTC. Huge move, right? Huge move. Um, then we see how the algorithm wants to fare there. If that fails to hold us as sort of preliminary support, I do drive targets back towards this fair value gap, which is yet to be fulfilled which is all the way back down to $27,000. Right now we are 37, okay? So if we go back down to 37, sorry, from 37 to 27, it's basic, you know, basic abstraction, subtraction, right? Layman terms, we're gonna drop 10 Gs. Make sense? We're gonna drop 10 Gs, okay? From 37 to 27, that's a $10,000 shave. Now, if you wanna get cute with it, you can get a percentage expression on that to read 25% to the downside meaning Bitcoin will drop about $9,000 per one if we take out these green boxes, right? Does that make sense? But I expect these green boxes to act as branches off a tree. If we get kicked out the tree, we might bounce on this branch, maybe this branch, or maybe this branch, okay? So there's three important branches on the daily that I wanna bring to your attention, right? One, two, three. Okay, so the first one, 36. The second one, about 31. And uh, then the next one, about 27, you know, just approximations, okay? So you can manage your expectations realistically. It's not going to go up straight, it ain't going to go down straight, you know, or bob and weave. And these are the regions where I think it will um, get into play. So I think that's largely it. Um, anything else I'd mention on here? Um, no, I don't think there is. Let's look at a weekly. Let's pull up a weekly. So looking at the weekly, this is kind of interesting as well. Um, I'm just going to reconfig these fair value gaps so they fit the weekly. So you can see there, massive, massive weekly fair value gap there. Um, I'd be looking at that as a indicative thing. And then we've got this one in all down here. So again, that's what I'd be looking at in terms of um, getting this delivered. So there, and we could call it about there if we close this. It's a bit of an adolescent one, this one. This one is not confirmed. It will be confirmed in the next six days and 15 hours, depending where this weekly expires. So we have to kind of watch out for that in real time. 
but again similar efficacy would be finding support at these green horizontal lines that you see depicted in the middle of these rectangles um, so yeah this is basically how I'm managing my risk realistically if we're above good if we go below these are the levels of contention and interplay um, okay let's put on our little indicator of magic here and let's see what this tells us so we've got 67 percent sell pressure with six days and 15 hours until the weekly expires we can see that we are still underneath this white horizontal here which is governing the yearly current high which is underneath 38 G's so similar picture um, just a little bit more mature now if we're looking at the metric here which is the trend volume inflection indicator we can see there is a second red dot here now this is something I mentioned the other day but I'll mention it again today and that's to say this on a weekly we've only had three red dots this year okay so we've only had three red dots this year now the red dots indicate when the RSI gets into the critical territory on a weekly basis the first time it happened was the 10th of April we then subsequently dropped seven thousand dollars per Bitcoin and for the last sort of two weeks we've had these two red dots so the first one well the first one most recently was on the 6th of November and this new one today was today literally right Cause it's the weekly fresh day today so it's the new week so in essence this is the third red dot this year so the first one we saw a six to seven thousand dollar deduction on the second iteration we haven't seen no follow through and the third one we've seen no follow through just yet so I'd be I'd be very much on edge here basically we see volatility expanding aggressively on this we do see stochastic momentum expanding aggressively and we do see RSI pittering out in the critical territory and it's not been this high well it's the third well you know it's, it's a handful of times this year let's just say that right it's a handful of times this year we've breached the critical territory on a weekly level and ultimately it's always led to a correction or a reset or a reconsolidation or a reaccumulation whatever you want to dub it as but I say it's not as bullish as being down here right so when it's green dots that's when you want to be buying when it's red dots that's when you want to be selling okay similar efficacy observe the masses do the opposite right if people are starting to overbuy an underlying instrument you might want to start selling it equally if it's oversold and they're overselling it you might want to start buying it and at the moment we are at these upper echelons of the critical territory meaning smart money is not buying here keep it simple okay anything else I'd mention on topic um, no not really let's bring it to a monthly and let's bring this baby to a landing so looking at the monthly again we've got 75% buy pressure very constructive we do have 17 days and 15 hours until December so until the Christmas countdown baby we've got 17 days and 15 hours that came really fast this year um, and again very simple right as long as we're under 38 not interested in buying Bitcoin at all okay at all my targets for this if we mute the indicator really quick and pull up some fair value gaps we'd be looking at this as a realistic area of contention which is back towards thirty thousand dollars so about a seven thousand dollar drop we're looking for on a monthly and then last but not least it would be this fair value gap down here to get back filled which is around about 20 g's okay so this is what i'm looking at on a monthly i don't think we're out of the woods yet at all um and yeah it's as simple as that really it's as simple as that really um so one thing i want to end on today um there is a new moon okay there is a new moon now so it does heighten the probability that the markets do sell off in the next sort of seven to 14 day period i do suspect market rotations to the downside because of the new moon cycle not to get too esoteric with it if you've been following my lingo you will know my thesis on the moon cycles the word month and month are the same because the moon cycle is 29.5 days i do put a lot of weight on you know time fractal analysis when we're studying the markets and we get our time from horology which is our place within the cosmos um so you know astrology and numerology go hand in hand when you go really deep into the calculus and the quantive the, sorry the quantum realm I don't want to get too nerdy with this one keeping it very simple with you typically the moon affects the tide why because the moon is a satellite if you look at the Oxford dictionary it will tell you the moon is a satellite and it does affect the tide of the ocean 
Um, and you know, momentum for me is like measuring the tide. You don't want to be the bloke that went against the tide and died. You don't want to be the person who's caught swimming naked when the tide goes out. And you don't want to be, um, you know, you just want to go against liquidity primarily. Humans are made of over 60% water on average. So this is why the moon affects human beings because we are largely speaking water and the moon has a huge implication on water. So it heightens our risk tolerance, it heightens our risk aversion. Um, so that's why we look at full moons being indicative of price action to the upside. And we look at new moons being indicative of price action discovery to the downside. So just a rule of thumb, there's been plenty of science experiments around this from Russia to European scientists, to American scientists, to African scientists, to Canadian scientists. So, you know, it's a, um, it's a real study. It's not just so esoteric bollocks. It's some serious topics that's been going on for eons, eons and eons and eons. So I'm not gonna go too deep into it. It's not a history lesson today. Um, but I've got plenty of podcast episodes surrounding the moon. So simply sift through my previous renditions and you will find a lot of signal in that. Again, simply go on YouTube, type in moon cycles or go on to chat GPT, type in moon cycles and the market, give me a table of all the scientific studies and it will do that in a heartbeat. So there you go, seek and thee shall find. I'm gonna leave it there. In summary, as long as we're underneath 38,000, I do think risk is to the downside. Right now, Bitcoin is worth 37 Gs. So we're still underneath that inflection from last week, okay? We've been falling ever since Thursday. And what's in motion tends to stay in motion till it stops, word to Newton's law of physics. Word to Elon, he's seen many men and many women break the, break the rules of women and man but no woman or man has broken the rules of physics or laws of physics. So when it comes to this numerical study, this is how we anchor our thesis into this dimension of time, volume, and price. And I'm gonna leave it there. So yeah, each one teach one. Socrates once said, one thing I do know is I do not know everything. So, you know, veres and numeres, that's Latin for strength and numbers. Seek and you shall find. I'll leave it there. God bless, have a great week, and I'll be back on tomorrow.